Kuhn. She's an open source enthusiast, currently working as a DevOps in, uh, at Issue Systems in, uh, in Ahmedabad in India. So he recently completed his studies as a master's in uh, information technology, and he has also participated a couple of times at the Google Summer of Code. So let's start. So actually, uh, the talk is in a uh, Python tag, and it also has a Django in title. But actually, it's, uh, the th uh, thought is more of uh, around uh, DevOps things. So we'll ca we'll see the Django part later on, and first we'll cover the uh, DevOps part first. So this is about me. I'm uh, working as a junior programmer analyst uh, at Issue Systems. I'm also co-organizer of uh, Java Meetup group in Ahmedabad. And uh, I'm also part of uh, code team of the JVG Ahmedabad. And uh, you can find more about me at uh, Twitter and my website, nikunstrucker.com. So yeah, uh, long story. So it's not really long, but uh, we can say it's a long story. So it all started with uh, one. Uh, uh, actually, one, uh, how many of you are uh, Hacker News fans? Like, you read Hacker News? Anyone? Okay, so many. So, uh, actually, Hacker News, uh, like, uh, uh, it's a very cool thing if you are a programmer and it's, uh, want to uh, want to be aware of uh, what's going on in, uh, in the industry and uh, want to know uh, what other people are thinking about, what uh, tools and technologies are going on. You uh, find a really nice articles and more interesting stuff is into the comments part of the articles. So uh, one day I was reading one article, uh, it was from the uh, uh, MailChimp uh, CTO and uh, it says that uh, social buttons, uh, social login buttons aren't worth it. So MailChimp tried, uh, tried to use, uh, remove the uh, user management functionalities from there and uh, tried to use the social buttons, but it didn't work from the, uh, for them. So uh, the CTO shared his experience, but uh, I couldn't agree on his uh, thoughts. So uh, uh, the discussion was going on the article on uh, 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 Hacker News, and I, I, I went through all the comments. And it was very, very really, really interesting things. Like people were uh, arguing about uh, what should be there and what should not be there. So I put a thought process on that and uh, try to come up with something like uh, that. I can uh, present to people and uh, make them like uh, this is really uh, not uh, this is really worth it if you use it in a correct way. So uh, the another part of story is. Like uh, I started my career uh, like uh, one and a half years back. I was into internship at uh, a startup uh, for like uh, 30, th uh, one month. And what I built is the user management fun functionalities for one of their projects. So, and then uh, this article came up and then everything I went back to uh, that day, like when I was working on that user management fun functionalities. So I spent like, uh, many days designing the login and registrations and coding for the user management functionalities and then I real, uh, realized that the, that thing was not worth it like that time I could have uh, used uh, utilized that time more efficiently working for like uh, something that generates value for the uh, company and for the uh, uh, people who are going to use the project or uh, use the uh, uh, product so I thought like why we are wasting our time behind something that is not at all important because like uh, your first focus should be your clients and uh, you, 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 you need to aware, uh, you should be aware that how to get your client into your product. So that, that, was, uh, that, that was the thing in my mind and we'll talk about few, uh, few more things like uh, from uh, I, I took this thing uh, from the uh, different different perspectives, so we'll see how uh, from which perspective should uh, we should look. So we believe in code uh, reuse. So uh, the first thing uh, when we start learning uh, programming, uh, the first thing we learn is about uh, reusing our code. Uh, whatever we write, uh, whatever code we write should be reusable. So actually. The log, uh, user management fun uh, functionalities are already there, but whenever a new web project comes, the first thing uh, come to our mind is like uh, st uh, start creating a registration page, start creating a login page, and uh, create a user table and registration table in your database. So our thoughts are li uh, lies around that thing only. We don't think about the actual uh, uh, actual thing that uh, that is going to generate the value for 
uh, us and for the uh, customers or the users of the application. So next thing is agility. So every, uh, like agile is a big word, big buzzword we are hearing now, nowadays. So every, everyone wants to be agile. But when, when, you are say, uh, when you are saying you are agile and you are building something uh, that is already there, are you actually agile or are you actually using agile in a correct way? So that was the thought process that came to my mind because everyone wants to be agile but they are not, uh, they are not picking up it in a right way. So uh, that's the different perspective to look at. Then the third thing is rapid development. We are living in an era of like uh, everything is going so fast, people are coming with mobile apps, people are coming in, uh, with the new web portals and uh, a new thing every day, we are getting a new thing every day. So uh, the development is going very fast and if you want to catch up that speed, you need to be, you need to be doing a rapid development. Like uh, if you have attended the Drew's talk in the, in the morning, we have talked about the prototype for production. So we were doing a like release in a three days, four days, and we were releasing a new feature every three, four days, and that was really usable thing. So at that time we did uh, like we also needed the user management. We we needed user for our application, but we didn't spend time on working on user uh, user management module. Rather, we spent time on uh, creating a features that actually generates the value for our product. So I. And actually it was very easy, like in three steps you can actually get a new user in, into your application. So we'll see that. So next thing is, uh, we, we believe in mobile first, so like uh, millions of mobile users are there and we are targeting them. So if you are, uh, and the another part of thing is like uh, if you try to uh, do this thing in, uh, for mobile platform, it becomes even more easier. So. Uh, we believe in mobile first and the next thing is and our customers are not zombies so when i uh, when i'm saying this actually uh, in every registration forms you see uh, we will ask details about the like uh, first name last name birth date all those things but that means you are not uh, uh, you don't know your customer you are trying to know him but actually they are all there in different different platforms and uh, like uh, the best example is this conference if i am uh, i am uh, meeting some guy and uh, saying is like this name take i'll find out his twitter handle and just go over the twitter and find out more details about it so that is already there so why don't we use the same thing for our applications or what we are doing so uh, that is the uh, one thing so i can use twitter or special uh, like facebook logins facebook credentials to get new user into my application. So why, why we are not doing that for our applications? So the next thing is people trust giants. Like if it comes to Google, Mozilla or Facebook, uh, if you are providing, uh, if you are building something around uh, those uh, applications and if you are uh, providing login through these uh, giants, people will trust it because they, they know that if, if they are providing details to them, the detail uh, is secure with them. So they, they won't let it go with some uh, random guy and the, uh, they won't let it go use it in a bad way. <coughs> so let's see how to do it. But, so okay, so now we know like, uh, so, uh, we are not building a user management mod module for our application. But uh, the another thing is like many people using uh, this uh, social authentication for their application. But uh, what criteria should be uh, taken care before considering uh, uh, considering to integrate any of the social authentication? So I uh, will talk about few things. So if you have any question so far in this thing, uh, we can take one question. Yes. Okay. So we'll move. So there's a no, uh, there are no rules for like uh, uh, selecting your uh, social authentication backend, but it's, uh, it's kind of common sense. So there are millions of users on Facebook. So even uh, I'm building an application, uh, I, should I integrate a Facebook, a Facebook as a social authentication backend in my application? The question depends on like, are you really, uh, are the Facebook users really your targeted customers? 
so there are many different things like if you are targeting someone uh, who is like uh, professional and you are integrating social uh, let's say facebook as a social backend in your application they won't log in into your application because they don't want to mess up with like their personal identity and their professional identity so in that case if i provide a backend uh, which log uh, use a backend like uh, let's say uh, linkedin people were more likely to log in in my application because they are, uh, my application is related to something professional and they are using their professional identity to log in to my application so that is the one the one criteria to uh, consider the another thing is personal versus professional versus social identity so like uh, the same example if i am using uh, i am building something uh, some application which is around the professional uh, which helps them uh, improve their uh, uh, professional lifestyle uh, they are more likely to use uh, linkedin uh, as in backend in my application so uh, linkedin as a login into my application if i am building something like uh, uh, which is around uh, facebook or twitter so i should integrate facebook or twitter as an uh, integration and I am, if I am building something which is like notification system or uh, those kind of thing, it is more likely to people will log in with their email IDs because I am providing them a digest or a reader digest or something kind of those kind of things as an output of my application. So those things needs to be considered. Then uh, there is a third thing is web first or versus mobile first. So if you are targeting customers which are on mobile platform, then uh, you need to consider like uh, if you consider Facebook or Twitter as in backend the people uh, people are more likely to uh, use it because it's very easy and uh, like uh, uh, it's uh, very easy for you to build and uh, it's very easy for users to use because it's very easy to uh, like uh, you are logged into your facebook account in your mobile then you you need, uh, you need not to uh, insert and in, uh, input anything uh, while login so that is one thing so uh, now let's come to the Django part of the uh, 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 this sort. So uh, when I, when I did it, it was it was really easy. I integrated the social authentication model in like three easy steps in uh, around an hour or so. So uh, we, we'll see how this uh, three. I'm using a Twitter as a backend for this demo. Uh, there's a code on GitHub. I'll share the link. So uh, first thing you need to do is. Uh, uh, whichever backend you choose, it will provide you uh, the. Uh, uh, you need to create an app within that backend. So, for in case of Twitter, you can go to apps.twitter.com and uh, create your application. So here, if you can see, uh, Twitter ID is the app which I have created for this uh, application. There is a create a new app button. So once you uh, click that button, uh, you will be asked uh, a few details to fill up, and uh, your app will be ready. So then you will be able to use uh, Twitter as a backend into your applications. So you are just uh, saying to uh, Twitter that I am using your uh, services to log in my clients with, uh, with your identity. So you need to provide the application name and the this is the important thing, the callback URL. So once uh, Twitter has done the uh, authentication for you, it will uh, redirect the user into some URL. So that URL you need to specify here. The step two is, uh, is to configure Django to use uh, that particular social authentication. So uh, few steps are required. I, I have used the project called Python Social uh, Auth. So uh, you just need to install the Python Social Auth and then you need to uh, provide this uh, uh, social apps Django app default thing, the second last line in the uh, second block into your installed blocks and then uh, uh, in your authentication backends, you need to specify social backends at the first. Because Django provides the authentication backend too, but uh, we are not using, we are using the social backend. Then uh, you need to include the uh, uh, social apps URL thing into your urls.py. And uh, whichever uh, backend you are using, it will provide you the uh, secret key and uh, the secret uh, to use for the authentication of user. So these things uh, you need to consider, uh, configure. And the last thing is you just need to put this line into your login.html file and you are ready to go. So there is a bonus step. You just need to run your applications and let's say it's running. So I'll show you the running demo. 
So if you see, I'm on the uh, local host, and you can see the uh, landing page of my application, which is like uh, login with Twitter. So once you log in with Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter will provide you all the required details which you need to use for your application. Like you need a first name, last name, the description from the uh, is coming from the Twitter, or the links from the uh, are coming from the Twitter. So you can use additional functionalities from the uh, like backend. So what we did is like uh, we created an uh, created an application which was like uh, parsing a resume. Uh, so uh, Drew has already talked about it. Uh, we did it using machine learning all this. So that uh, we required like uh, uh, import uh, LinkedIn profiles from the uh, of the users profile from the LinkedIn. So we integrated this. Uh, we provided social authentication with LinkedIn, and we asked users to share their details with us. So uh, in application uh, permissions, you can specify what details you require for your application to use. And we also integrated uh, Dropbox because we didn't want to uh, uh, load all the data on our servers. So we asked two things from the users, once their LinkedIn profile and their uh, Dropbox access. And what we did is we loaded their uh, resume from the LinkedIn and we passed it and we stored detail on their Dropbox account. So we have no data of users. We just know that users are logged, uh, logged through uh, LinkedIn and we are storing the details on their Dropbox account so they can see the uh, output of our application in, the, in their own account. So we are not uh, taking any data from user, we are not storing it on our servers, we are storing into their personal storage. So those kind of like perks uh, uh, comes with like if you use such uh, features from uh, social authentication app. So, Yeah, I think that is it from my side. If you have any questions around it. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how is it different from Buffer? Because Buffer also allows like, logging with the seller. Right? Yeah, so actually you can use any of the project. I'm not. Uh, like simplify Buffer. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying that uh, you, uh, you don't need to create a user management module every time you create a new application. So it's, uh, it was very easy for, uh, in our case, it was very easy with Django, so we did it with Django. Uh, you can use uh, with uh, like any platform, if you are using Java, there are libraries for this thing. If you are using any other language, there are libraries for it. Yeah. How would you have content that you Yeah. So actually, uh, if, uh, this is the basic example. If you specify a login pipeline, uh, where you can specify what all uh, what all stuff you need from the uh, like backend. So if I'm using uh, Twitter as a backend, and I need uh, first name, last name, description, all the thing. So I I can specify the stuff in my login uh, uh, pipeline, uh, and it will load into my database. And then you can use those stuff or add more things into that. Yeah. In the commercial applications, do you still use custom lo logging or do you give a user option to like create a user or you have kind of temporary no. We don't have a create user app. Like uh, uh, what uh, what I would suggest is uh, there is a browser ID provided by Mozilla. So uh, if you use that as a backend, so if if uh, if your user are not there on any social profiles or like say LinkedIn or that, they must be having a email account. So the Mozilla browser ID takes the responsibility to authenticate user using the email account. So that will do the job for you. You, you need not to create a like a, a forward password and all those things. Uh, Mozilla will take care of that thing. And it will send the uh, link for the confirmation of profile into your mail account. And it will once it as uh, the email ID is confirmed, it will send you the notification back that this is the authenticated client a user, and then they will be able to log in. By, by any chance, have you, have you done some uh, testing or measurements like how many users who come to your site kind of uh, go away because they 
they cannot get through their email or Facebook account or they don't have a Facebook account. So actually in our case we have a very uh, like targeted uh, uh, user base. So uh, we, uh, we don't have like option to like, uh, uh, we have only option for login thing. We don't know who, uh, who has visited our site and didn't log in. We have the only login data. But if you have, like, uh, we believe that if you are providing a uh, valuable thing to your cu customer, then they will log in. Maybe add a button, like, I really want to have your account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you.